Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance so all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we are very blessed and very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us to give the class. And he will be speaking on Canto 1, Chapter 9, Verse 42. And we are getting close to the end of the chapter entitled The Passing of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance and also glories to you and all goes to Shri Prabhupada. Arriva, 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 all glories to Prabhupada. All glories to the assembled devotees. Pancha Kalpa Darubas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Vyagra Cha. Vitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha. Thank you, Mother Anna Suya. Thank you, Maharaj. We are in Sridham Mayapur, so that's where you're hearing me from. Hare well. Yes, I was just with Devam Rit Swami just a few hours ago, so we were, we were talking about you. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I was talking about you. He was listening. <laughs> uh oh. I really. <laughs> I said all nice things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marshall. Only by your blessings and your mercy, Maharaj. <laughs> uh, I don't have any mercy. Blessings, I don't know what they are. <laughs> so, I know that I, know I get them from you, Maharaj. I know that, that I is only by your mercy, your, by your blessing, and by your love, and, and everything else that comes with it. That I'm able to serve all of you, the devotees, my spiritual master. I was just, just saying, I was just saying how nice Anasuya is, and she's got a nice temple, and it's got so many regular programs, and so he was happy to hear that. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for always supporting me. Thank you so much for always supporting me and always helping me. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard because you are supporting others so those who support others automatically receive support <laughs> and i pray that i will never lose your support and your guidance and your help and, and your love and everything else Marge. i pray that i never lose that pennsylvania never used to be a one of my more important states to visit but Things have changed since my last visit. <laughs> hey, well, I know that myself and Dear Krishna are very excited to hear that. <laughs> okay, so Srimad Bhagavatam 1942 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Tarimam Mahamajam Sariram Bajam Ready Ready Distritam Atma Kaupitanam Vatidrisham Eva Nakadar Kam Ekam Samadigatos me vididu. Vidutta Veda Mohana. Translation. Translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to go down the page to get to the translation. Okay. This is Bhishma Dev is still speaking. Now I can meditate with full concentration upon that one Lord Sri Krishna now present before me because now I have transcended the misconceptions of duality in regard to his presence in everyone's heart, even in the hearts of the mental speculators. He is in everyone's heart. The sun may be perceived differently, but the sun is one. Hmm. Very deeply philosophical prayer. Lord Sri Krishna is the one absolute supreme personality of Godhead, but he has expanded himself into his multi plenary portions by his inconceivable 
energy. So God is one, but he expands himself and he still remains one, but he appears to be many. So the one becomes many, but still remains one. And he appears in the hearts of all of the entities, not known as Antoyomi or Supersoul. The conception of duality is due to ignorance of his inconceivable energy. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.11, the Lord says that only the foolish take him to be a mere human being. Such foolish men are not aware of his inconceivable energies. By his inconceivable energy, he is present in everyone's heart as the sun is present before everyone all over the world. The Paramatma feature of the Lord is an expansion of his plenary portions. He expands himself as Paramatma in everyone's heart by his inconceivable energy. And he also expands himself as the glowing effulgence of Brahma Jyoti by expansion of his personal glow. So here we're getting two features of the absolute truth, the all-pervading effulgence of the loan known as Brahma Jyoti, where that covers the entire existence, creation, and then his localized form where he is in the hearts of all of the entities. So these are non-different, but different manifestations of himself. God is one. It's stated in the Brahma Samhita that the Brahma Jyoti is his personal glow. There is no difference between him and his personal glow, Brahma Jyoti, or his plenary portion as Paramatma. Less intelligent persons who are not aware of this fact consider Brahma Jyoti and Paramatma to be different from Sri Krishna. This misconception of duality is completely removed from the mind of Bhavishma Dev. And now he is satisfied that it is Lord Krishna only who is all, all in everything. This enlightenment is attained by the great Mahatmas or devotees, as it states, states in the Bhagavad Gita 7919, Vahunam Jnanam Amati Samahatma Durlabaha. Vasudeva is all in all and everything, and there is no existence of anything without Vasudeva. Vasudeva is another name for Krishna. He is the original Supreme Person, now confirmed by Bhishma Dev, who was known as a Mahajan, and therefore both the neophytes and the pure devotees must try to, down the page, follow in his footsteps. This is the way of devotional line. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Vidavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishnaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vid Oh, there's more, I'm sorry. Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Ne Vivase Sasunya Vadi Pasyatya De Satarine Vanchakopa Thiru Vizja Pripa Sindhu Pae Vacha Patitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnavi Gyo Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadagara Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Continue with the rest of the purport Worshipable object of Bhishma Dev is Lord Krishna as Para Parta Sarati. And that of the gopis is the same Krishna in Vrindavan as the most attractive Shamsunar. Sometimes less intelligent scholars make a mistake and think that the Krishna of Vrindavan and that of the battle of Kurukshetra are different personalities. But for Bhishma Dev, this misconception is completely removed. Even the impersonalist object of destination is Krishna as the impersonal jyoti and the yogi's destination of Paramatma is also Krishna. Krishna is both Brahma Jyoti and localized Paramatma, but in Brahma Jyoti or Paramatma, there is no Krishna or sweet relationship with Krishna. In his personal feature, Krishna is both Parasarathi, Parasarathi, 
and Shamasundar in Vrindavan. But in his impersonal feature, he is neither in the Brahma Chauti nor the Paramatma. Great Mahatmas like Bhishma Dev realize all of these different features of Lord Krishna and therefore they worship Krishna knowing him as the origin of all features. Mm -hmm. Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Nitu Bahudam Vidadati Vokaman. There is one who maintains all the others, and that one becomes many for the sake of different functions. Parasya Shakti Virahaya Suyate Svabhava Gigdhava Bhakriya Cha. So he expands himself by himself and different features of himself for different purposes. As mentioned here, in his personal form, he is Shamasundar in Vrindavan, but he is also part of Sarthi that he appeared on the battlefield battling with Bhishma Dev in his final moments. So this God is one. And just like sometimes we see from different religions, they say, well, my God is, and then they come up with a name, and your God is, and they come up with another name. But God is one, although he has many names and he has many forms. If God is limited to one name and one form, then he is quite impotent. And therefore, he is not really God in that limited sense. So we have to understand that the absolute truth is unlimited and he appears in unlimited ways for different functions and for different to facilitate different relationships. But it's the same person. You might see the president of a country. So when he appears in public, he might be dressed in a very elegant suit and he's surrounded by ministers and uh, maybe also military. But well, maybe when he's um, in his office, he's more relaxed. Um, he may have a few secretaries there and he's in a less, less formal way in that way. When he goes home, he uh, puts on his uh, reclining clothes and he is surrounded by his family members and he may be dressed differently there. Or when he goes to the beach, he may only wear a bathing suit. So he appears differently, but he's the same one person. But Krishna, he appears not only in different dresses, but in different forms of himself which are all the forms of the different dresses? That's all. They are. And they are non different than Krishna. One who knows this knows everything. Because, as is explained here, Bhishma Dev realized, and it's not like he theoretically understood, he realized completely that the same person who is all pervading throughout existence, who's situated in the hearts of all living entities, who is standing in before me in his feature as part of Sarthi is the same one personality of Godhead. There is no difference. But there is difference and non-difference. Therefore, in order to understand or to get a beginning of to understand the absolute truth, it's uh, achintya beta beta tattva. Beta abeda means different and non-different Tattva means truth simultaneously. So God can be different and, and different than he is at the same time and still be one. <laughs> this is the nature of the absolute truth. Um, we see, a, we will just use the example of how a person can expand himself into different features of himself by changing his dress and by changing his relationships with people in different spheres of his life. But he's the same one person. But Krishna, is he, he can do that also, but he can also change his forms to manifest his particular desires for facilitating either the creation or the uh, interaction with his devotees in different areas of loving exchange. So Bhishma Dev has come to that realization. <laughs> So one who comes to that realization, then they can understand this is Krishna. And so the all-pervading feature of the Lord is the Brahma Jyoti, and that exists throughout creation. 
So therefore, everything in creation is permeated by the existence of the Lord in his impersonal feature of himself. And he is localized in the hearts of every living entity. Just like the example here, I might be, you know, I might be sitting in one place in the world and you might be sitting in another place. And it's both daytime. It might be sundown for me. It might be sunrise for you. But it's the same sun. We may be thousands of miles apart and we're seeing the same sun. So that sun is the same, whether seen from one, one particular place in the creation or another. Um, therefore, the sun is the same. So that is called a localized manifestation of God who appears in the hearts of all living entities. And uh, that is the man a mercy manifestation of the Lord in the sense that he gives direction in the hearts of the living entities according to their particular desires. So to know this means to, to have realization of the nature of the absolute truth, that God is one. But for us, devotees in the Gaudiya Math, or when we say in the ISKCON Society of the Extension of Srila Prabhupada's Gaudiya Math, he explains that we are interested in Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. This is the sweet manifestation of Krishna. He is known as Shama Sundar. He's known as Govinda, Gopinath, uh, Madhava, and so many intimate names that a, a, a are indicating of his sweet nature and his relationships with his different devotees in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So we as devotees were interested in that aspect. And then Prabhupada points that out in the Bhagavad Gita in the, in the 18th chapter, verse number 65, where he describes the different manifestations or incarnations of the Lord. But he says, for the devotees who follow Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are interested only in Krishna and Vrindavan. This is our worshipable manifestation of Krishna. Of course, you might say, well, what happens if the devotee has another particular relationship with Krishna in another feature? Then through the worship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is teaching the mood of Vrindavan, then the devotee will be led according to that relationship. We have the example in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes where one of his intimate associates, not so intimate, but also very, very intimate in one sense, was Marari Gupta. Now, Marari Gupta was a manifestation or an incarnation of Hanumanji. And therefore, his eternal relationship with the Lord was in servitorship to Sri Ram. Lord Chaitanya wanted to test the depth of his commitment to Ramchandra. So he started to taunt him and tease him in a way and say, you know, Ram's pastimes are very nice, but Krishna's pastimes are very sweet. They're more intimate and sweeter. So it would be a good idea if you became a devotee of Krishna. <laughs> and being very obedient to Lord Chaitanya, he was thinking, well, it's not going to be possible, but let me try. So that night after receiving that apparent instruction, it wasn't an instruction, but it was a, a recommendation, he went home and he was trying to focus on Krishna and Vrindavan. He couldn't. <laughs> All he could think of was his worshipful deity, Sri Ramchandra. And so the whole night he simply struggled with that, with that uh, instruction. The next morning, after coming back without no, no sleep the whole night, he, he admitted to Lord Chaitanya, it's not possible. To, I mean, please forgive me. I'm not able to follow that recommendation of worshiping Krishna. And uh, Krishna, Lord Chaitanya became very enlightened. He took out a piece of Gopi Chandan, and he wrote on the forehead of Marari Gupta, Ramdas, <laughs> you are the servant of Sri Ramchandra. So that was beautiful. So even if you have a relationship with 
with the Supreme Lord in a different manifestation, such as we have our Sridhar Swami, who is the original commentator on the Srimad Bhagavatam. His Ishtadeva is Lord Nishrigadev. And he, um, in the uh, 87th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, the prayers for the personified Vedas, in the purports, his prayers to Lord uh, Nishringadev are mentioned at the end of every purport. And so it's, um, he's deep in his relationship with Lord Nishringadev. Similarly, there are those who worship, uh, we have, um, we have, uh, what was his name? Can't think of his name right now. I'll think of it. Let me see. Hmm. He was one of the um, later. He was the, the brother of Venkatabhata. Um, so is he Saraswati? Not Saraswati. Right. Can't think of his name right now. It'll come to me. And. Uh, he doesn't want to know about any manifestation of God except Lord Chaitanya. He's absorbed in Lord Chaitanya. Of course, being absorbed in Lord Chaitanya means to worship Radha and Krishna and Sri Vrindavan down. But when he thinks about, when he speaks about the inner incarnations, he completely rejects the idea. Um, Trimala Bhata, Tirumala Bhata. No, it's not, it's not, um, Tirumala Bhatta. You're thinking of Trimala Bhatta, Prabodhananda, that's it, Prabodhananda Saraswati. And thank you, Krishna Shringa Lila. Prabodhananda Saraswati. You read his prayers, he's just so deep and so, he almost sounds like a complete fanatic when he speaks about Lord Chaitanya as being the only manifestation of his worship of deity. And rather, I mean, that's not different than Krishna and Vrindavan because. Lord Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Mahayanya. He manifests himself as a form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the purpose of teaching the conditioned souls in this age of Kali Yuga how to worship him in the form of Lord Krishna. So he's teaching that from the position of a devotee although he is the same worshipable object who is being, who is teaching. And so that is Prabhupada Siddhartha Saraswati. So you see, there are many great souls throughout the uh, culture of, of devotion, of the Vaishnav culture, who worship the Lord in their different forms. But those who worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu usually uh, normally follow in the footsteps of the Muru Vrindavan because he is non-different than Vrindavan. And he teaches that mood through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So all of the forms of the Lord are the Lord. There's no difference. Um, and all of the forms of the Lord have all the powers of the Lord, but they only manifest a certain level of their shaktis, their energies, their opulences, according to the, the particular form they take in order to facilitate their, their appearance in the material world. But they're all the absolute supreme personality of Godhead. The Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, as is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, out of all the manifestations and uh, portions and plenary portions of incarnations of the Lord, Sri Krishna is the source of them. Iti, Ishwara Parma Krishna Sachid Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karna Brahma Samhita gives us in the very first verse the standard of well, who is Krishna? He is the supreme Ishwar, he's Param Ishwar, he's not just Ishwara. He's that Ishwar that controls all the other Ishwaras, therefore, another name for Krishna is Param Ishwara. And he is Sachid Ananda Vigraha. His body is made out of transcendental, pure spiritual energy, which is non-different than himself. He is uh, an Adir Adir Govinda, and he is one, and there's no one who is equal to him or greater than him. He is the source of everything. Sarvakarna Karnam, 
all causes, all manifestations in existence cannot happen without his personal, uh, his intervention. In other words, he controls everything directly and indirectly through his different energies, which are non-different than Krishna. So when you understand these principles that we just discussed, then you understand there's nothing but Krishna. There's nothing outside of Krishna. There's no thing, no, there's no such thing as Krishna and something else. Everything is Krishna ultimately. And that's understood by this principle of Achintya Veda Veda Tattva, that the energy and the source of energy, just like the sun and the sunshine, the energy of the sun is the shine of the sun, but the shine of the sun has no separate existence. It exists only because of the sun. And therefore, the energies of the Lord cannot be separated from the Lord because they're coming from the Lord as the sunshine cannot be separated from the sun. But in one sense, they're it's the same. In another sense, they're different. It's for the sake of function. It's for the sake of performing uh, his personal relationships in the material world. So this is the, uh, this is the realization that Bhishma Dev has got, that everything is Krishna. <laughs> That same Paramatma feature in the heart of the Lord who's standing in front of him in his personal form as Parthasarthi are is they're non-different. And so when you, when you get that realization, when you come to that level of realization, then that, that is full Krishna consciousness. And when you understand there's nothing outside of the Lord, in both in his personal and impersonal feature, therefore we worship Krishna in his personal feature, there is a class of spiritualists, so-called spiritualists, who like to worship the Lord in his impersonal feature. They do not connect the personal with the impersonal. They think the personal is simply a manifestation in order to perform worship. But they think that the impersonal is the highest because they say personal means localized and impersonal means all pervading and therefore God is all pervading, therefore he's impersonal. But he's both. He's both personal and impersonal and he's all pervading and localized at the same time. So they, they, they marginalize Krishna's energies and simply accept the impersonal feature. Why do they do that? Because generally because they don't want to follow the instructions of Krishna in his personal form as he explains himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Um, therefore, they are known as Mayavadis, impersonalists, and therefore they um, create their own philosophical ideas on how the scriptures should be understood and worship accordingly. Just like they, they may also chant the holy name of the Lord, but they think the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is simply a means to get to a higher stage of uh, consciousness. It's like a ladder. That once you, if you want to climb to the top of a building, you may use a ladder. But once you get to the top, there's no need for the ladder anymore. And the ladder is simply created to get you to the top of the building. That's the only use of the ladder. And there's no other use. In the same way, using that analogy, they create the, they accept the the personal forms of the Lord as a means to get to the impersonal aspect where God is all pervading. And therefore they cannot understand that although God is coming at a personal form, in that personal form exists all of the energies of God. As we mentioned, So all of the energies of the Lord are there within the form of the Lord, but from the philosophical point of view, it has to be understood through the process of devotional service. Just like Krishna told Arjuna, um, uh, you cannot understand me unless you engage in devotional service alone. Um, he met, and there's a beautiful verse in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita where he, Krishna says, um, yeah. only, by only by undivided devotional service as I known, can it be known as I am standing before you. 
Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So bhakti is the, is the, the only means to enter into the higher realms of understanding of Krishna. Otherwise, the, the lower realms, which are the impersonalist, give you some understanding that God is all pervading. And therefore, if God is all pervading, how do you worship? Because worship means a person. You can't worship something impersonal. You can't worship the air. You can't worship the sunshine. You have to worship something that is of the nature of personality. And personality means characteristics. Personality means certain qualities. And therefore, this is what's attractive. So they have no attraction for Krishna because they see that he is nirguna and they translate nirguna as without qualities. We also use that word nirguna because it's there in the scriptures. But our understanding of nirguna, according to scriptures, according to the, the sages, is that nirguna means without material qualities. But he has qualities, he has features, he has activities, he has personality, um, he has forms. These are all eternal. The, the, the Maya bodies say, well, maybe he, when he takes on a form and he comes to this material world, it's a material form. It's something temporary in order to manifest himself in this material world. And these forms are not eternal and they're actually material. And therefore, avajanti mamudha manusim tanamasputam parambhava magyanato mamabhuta maheshwara. Fools deride me. When I come in my personal feature, they do not know my supreme dominion over all that be. Ham prakrashyam sarvasya yoga maya samadvita mudo yoga avajanati. Krishna also says, uh, I'm covered by my curtain of Mamaya, and therefore the those who don't those who try to understand me without devotional service, mudo um, yo mudo means fools. Uh, they, they can't go beyond a certain level of understanding, and they never understand Krishna and his personal form. So the personal form of Krishna and Krishna are non-different. And Krishna is all pervading and simultaneously localized. Vadantita tadvad vidyam tadvadyanam avyayam brahmati paramatmati bhagavan eti sabjate. This verse from the second chapter of Bhagavatam explains, first canto, that the absolute truth is one, as is we're hearing here, but it manifests itself in three features of that same oneness. And there are no difference. They're just gradations of worship. And therefore, the, the jnanis, they try to achieve uh, the Brahma Jyoti. The benefit of achieve, achieving Brahman realization is they understand themselves as being spiritual. And they understand that the material energy uh, is temporary. And uh, they usually engage in various types of uh, worship, uh, various types of uh, uh, yoga, uh, various types of, of course, pranayama. The beginning features of the Astanga yoga system are mostly features for the jnanis. The yogis, they worship the Lord as Paramatma, situated in the hearts of all living entities. Their understanding of the absolute truth is a little more developed and more complete. But the complete manifestation of God is Sri Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. And that's where only worship, as, as Krishna says, only by devotional service can I be known in my personal feature. No other way. So one who takes the devotional service is considered to be the most intelligent of all living beings. Why? Because they've understood, at least theoretically, that the Lord is a person. And serving that person, just like in this material world, we also engage in service in various types of people who have relationships with us, or maybe even those who are extended. Maybe we even serve people in society to some degree. 
but we have a more constant relationship with people who are close to us, such as friends or family members. But the relationship is based on service. So in the same way, uh, that principle of service reaches its perfection when we engage in serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when we serve in the mood of Vrindavan, and how to serve in the mood of Vrindavan, one has to follow in the footsteps of a great soul from Vrindavan and hear about Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Therefore, in our temples every day, we worship Srimati Tulsi Devi, Vrindai Tulsi Devi, Priyai Kesavastacha, Vishnu Bhakti, Pradi Devi Sachivachainam, Yani Kani Chipapani, Brahmahatvidikani Chantani Tani, Padasayanti Praksana Pade Pade. Um, she is Vrinda Devi, and she is a gopi in Vrindavan. She's manifested herself in this form as a Tulsi plant in order to accept worship. And by worshiping Tulsi Devi properly, with the proper mood and the continuous, she awakens within the heart the desire for the devotee to enter into the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So Tulsi is very dear, and she is Vrindadev. And there are other great personalities who manifest themselves in order to facilitate the worship of the conditioned souls in the material world so they can gradually come to the higher stages. But the essence of all of this is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, because Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is non-different than Sri Vrindavan Dham. Goloka Prema Dan Harinam Sankirtan Raktin Jam Mino Kene Upai. That that chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which consists of three words, Hare Krishna and Rama, are actually coming from Sri Vrindavan Dam. Goloka Prema Dan. Goloka Prema. The, the Prema of Goloka is mercifully manifested in the form of. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So to sum up this whole lecture, the idea is chant the Hare Krishna Ma Maha Mantra, get a taste for that chanting, develop your chanting, hear about Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham, and serve those devotees who are attached to Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham, and of course, engage in practical service throughout one's life. These are the features which open up the doors to Vrindavan. And uh, this is our goal actually to come to that stage of realization of Sri Krishna and Vrindavan. As Srila Prabhupada makes that point in 1865, if you can turn to that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, 1865, um, in the purport, there is a nice uh, explanation by Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Maharaj, I'm going to ask Vrinda Vishaka, one of them, to get on there. Okay. 1852, Maharaj, you said? 1865. 1865, sorry. Just to illustrate Prabhupada's statement on this, I think it's important. Um, always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. He's talking to Arjuna. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. If we go down to the purport, we will find some interesting statements relationship scroll down the page continue to go down the page per port mm -hmm. uh, Marsh this is the farthest that I can go unfortunately yeah yeah the words stress that one should concentrate on his mind on Krishna, the very form of two hands carrying a flute, the bluish boy with a beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hand. These are descriptions of Krishna found in the Brahma Samhita and other literatures. 
one should fix his mind on, his, on, the, on the original form of Godhead Krishna. One should not divert, even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. The Lord has multi forms as Vishnu, Narayan, Rama, Varaha, etc. But the devotee should concentrate on his uh, concentrate his mind on the form that was present before Arjuna. Concentration on the mind of the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge, and this is disclosed to Arjuna because Arjuna is the dear friend of Krishna. The Prabhupada illustrates and emphasizes that this is our mood of worship, Krishna and Sri Vrindavan. Okay, so just to sum up the whole lecture based on this particular point. And it's the manifestation of Krishna in all his, uh, all of his qualities in full is found in Krishna. Mm -hmm. Beauty, knowledge, renunciation, fame, a strength, and uh, wealth are all there in Krishna fully. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mark. It was such a wonderful class. It's uh, whenever I hear your class, it's so it's so beautiful because it goes so smooth. And it comes to a simple uh, conclusions like, wow, so amazing. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Would like to ask devotees, do you have any questions, any comments, um, you know, clarification, please do uh, either raise your hand and I will call upon you. We have about 31 participants, so I wanna not miss anybody. Or you can just jump right in and um, hopefully there's no collision. Vishaka, go ahead. Thank you, Shamaraj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you. Um, Maharaj, you were speaking earlier about um, the... Yeah, wait, one minute, one minute. Can we, uh, can we get to the full screen of the devotees online? Uh, I'm still looking at the verse. Yes, so Maharaj. Maybe we can open that up. And then we asked the devotees if they can. It would be nice if all the devotees can turn on their videos. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now. Okay, so. Okay, Vishaka. <laughs> Hi, Krishna Maharaj. So I'm jumping from device to device here. Um, so my question was about the theme of Dom, which I think we talked, we spoke about a lot in the lecture, um, also including the fact that you're in Sri Dom Live for now. Um, so my question was, um, yesterday I was reading in the book about Srila North and Das Thakur about how he went to New Vrindavan, and we had a discussion in the group about how Dom really is a consciousness. So could you speak more about Dom being a consciousness instead of a geographical location on that? Yeah, one who is fully absorbed in the mood of worshiping Krishna in Vrindavan, wherever they are, they're in Vrindavan. Even Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, when he said, my mind is like Vrindavan, <laughs> which means that he never leaves that mood of consciousness. So that that is a high state of consciousness, but it's available for those who absorb themselves in worshiping the Lord in that in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Then they can carry that mood wherever they go. And therefore, in the absolute sense of the term, they're never leaving Vrindavan because consciousness is what life is about. You can be wherever you are, but you are where your consciousness is. You could be sitting in Harrisburg, but if your consciousness is in Mayapur, you're in Mayapur. <laughs> I could be sitting here in, in, you know, Mayapur, and but my consciousness, if I'm think, if I'm absorbed in thinking of some other place, then that's where I am. So consciousness takes us from place to place. So when we fix our mind on Krishna and Vrindavan and develop that consciousness, then wherever we are, that's Vrindavan. 
So Vrindavan is both a place of existence and a state of consciousness, a pure spiritual consciousness. That's why we call Krishna consciousness. Is, is Krishna consciousness relegated to a certain person or a certain place? No. You can be Krishna conscious wherever you are. So a manifestation of Krishna consciousness is Vrindavan consciousness. That's also Krishna consciousness, but it's specific in, in thinking of Krishna in the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. But it's not about thinking. It's actually bringing the consciousness into, into Krishna in the Vrindavan. It doesn't become something that you have to force. It's something that becomes natural due to the, due to the focus of the worship. But it's not easily tamed. I'm not saying you can just, you can think of Vrindavan, but then again, um, can you stay in that consciousness of Krishna and Vrindavan? So how do you do that? By uh, immersing yourself in Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So if you're always thinking of the pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan, you're in Vrindavan. How did the Goswamis write all their books? Because they, are, they were absorbed in Krishna. And therefore they could not only uh, absorb themselves in Krishna, they could actually enter into Krishna's leelas that were unmanifest, but became manifest through their pure devotion to Krishna and Sri Vrindavan. In other words, they could see the pastimes of the Lord and therefore they could write them down. It's almost like watching a screen. You're watching a screen like I can see you in your room there. And you have some kind of behind. You have something behind you. Your wall is white and it's got some blue sofa or something behind you. So I can see you, but I'm not there. I'm here. So in the same way, those who have absorbed themselves in Krishna consciousness can see Krishna directly in their mind's eye. We call it the mind's eye, the eye of the mind. When you're in love with someone, even in the material world, you can't stop thinking about them. You're, not, you're, you're, you're tripping over everything you're trying to do where you are. You can't even function. All you can think about is the person you love. And you're just going through your day-to-day -day activities in a mechanical way. Sometimes you're conscious of what you're doing. Sometimes you're not. Because all you can think about is that person you love who's not with you. So in the same way, you apply that to Krishna, it's the same. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Does that help? Yes, very much so. Okay. So don't forget Krishna. <laughs> Maharaj, to, uh, to piggyback on Vishaka's question, because I I get this uh, a lot from devotees um, where they, they say, you know, they want to go to the Holy Dham, they want to go to Vrindavan, they want to go to Mayapur, and they're not able to see see or develop that mood of where they are at to make it that consciousness. How can one develop that mood or understanding of practice or what practice much should they do or can one do to develop that consciousness that where they are at can also be Vrindavan and Mayapur? <laughs> I think I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm because I get that a lot. <laughs> I, I just answered it, I think. <laughs> but 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 Marsh, they I get this, but it but 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 oh but honestly, it's not the same. It's, it's it's not the same. That's the answer. It's not the same. If you want to if you want to absorb yourself in a particular consciousness, hear about that place, that person that is connected to that realm of existence. So we want to absorb ourselves in Krishna and Vrindavan and hear about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Um, just like you might be sitting in Harrisburg and you want to go to Vrindavan, 
And so as your desire to go to Vrindavan increases, you start thinking more and more about Vrindavan. And at the same time, you're making plans how to get there. So as you're doing that, you're formulating in your consciousness the place that you actually want to go to. And pretty soon it manifests itself in a physical form. You build that. That's, that's how consciousness works. Consciousness creates images in the mind when it's concentrated. The more the concentration, then the images come with the particular thought process. Thank you, Maharaj. And I, uh, and you, you it's see like the... we were talking today. We had a we had a program. Today we had a program about Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Uh, did you listen to it online? March, I did not. I think when it happened, it was like two in the morning for us. <laughs> I'm, <yeah. laughs> so but I'm going to watch dreaming, it later. You're dreaming about it. So <laughs> I, was exp <laughs> I was explaining in my talk that, you know, at a few times in my experience when I was with Maharaj, I'd be thinking about something and he, he knew exactly what I was thinking about. So in other words, thoughts also are forms of communication. Although they're not verbally expressed, they create an image when in the thought is strong and a person's are perceptive, they can pick up on that another person's thought. And you see that even in the material world. That's why you have to be careful what you think. <laughs> I've had that with Marge before, Marge, with my growth. It was kind of a scary, but yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah, you see, the, so the, the idea is create that that image within your mind by absorbing yourself than anything related to that. That's all. And then you're there. And Prabhupada gives a very... You know, Interesting little story. He says, um, he tells a story, it's not so commonly told, but I used to hear it when I first joined. Two, two boys, they're walking and they're on their way to the prostitute's house. And as they go, they pass the kirtan party. So one of the devotees, one of the boys said, oh, there's the Hare Krishnas, they're performing kirtan. I'm going to go to the kirtan. And the other one said, oh, I'm not interested. So he goes on to the prostitute's house and the one boy stays with the kirtan. So the boy in the kirtan, he's thinking about his friend who's in the prostitute house. And he's thinking, boy, my friend, he's there, he's, uh, he's enjoying, and here I am in the, this kirtan. And the other boy who's in the prostitute's house, he's thinking, boy, my friend is more intelligent. He went to the kirtan. He's doing something for his spiritual benefit. And he's thinking about the kirtan. So Prabhupada said, who's better off? <laughs> you are where your mind is. <laughs> so you can be in Vrindavan Dham and you can be in Patala Loka at the same time. <laughs> Or you can be in Patala Loka and you can be in Vrindavan. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Um, any clarification? Um, you can definitely jump right in. Um, yes, Sri Devi. So nice to see you, Sri Devi. Thank you, Anasuya. Dear Guru Maharaj and devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this uh, really very uh, informative and important lecture on the different aspects of Krishna. I'm uh, still mulling over this localized feature of Krishna, a super soul, who is also a, a, po a plenary portion of Krishna, another form of Krishna. So why we cannot have a relationship with Krishna in our heart, we're hearing all the time Krishna is our best friend, he's accompanying us life after life, he's always with us, and so on and so on. 
So why is it that we cannot meditate on Krishna in our hearts and have a relationship yeah. with like that? Yeah, you can. What's stopping you? <laughs> no, no, I'm asking. We are saying that the feature of Krishna as Paramatma doesn't have the same sweet features as Krishna, but he he's is also... There. He's there. He's nine inches. Prabhupada said he's nine inches tall and he has four arms. And he had he had Janarati, Jan, Jadurani, and uh, Murlidar. Both of them combined together to make a painting of Super Soul. And that's the throne of famous paintings. Prabhupada described what is Super Soul in the heart. So he has a form. Yes. But he's a forearm form. So, so it's cannot, better to... if, if you want to worship the Lord into the heart and make that your focus of worship, then that's the mood of the yogis. And you become, you can understand that God is in the hearts of all living entities and you can realize that. But higher than that, or more, not higher, but more complete is the form of Krishna in his personal form as two-handed two form. There you get his pastimes. <laughs> You get his qualities. Mm, I see. So in oh. the man realization, there is only there is only let's see. I'm trying to think. In Paramatma realization, there is understanding of the Lord is everywhere. In, in Bhagavan realization, the Lord is Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And in Brahma Jyoti, the, let's see, it's uh, the quality of, what is it? Yeah, the, you know, in Brahman realization, there is no understanding of the form of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's partial realization of the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. And Paramatma is more complete and Bhagavan is complete. So um, you have what is called, uh, what is that? Oh, okay, we got it now. In the, uh, in the Brahman realization, you got Sat. Sat means you understand the eternal nature of the Lord. In Paramatma, you got sat chit. You got you got knowledge, and and in Krishna, you have sat chit ananda. You have ananda. So in Krishna, the Bhagavan form, you get ananda, and not in the other two manifestations. So we're looking for ananda. That's I was just writing to. my notes down, Maharaj, from, from what you just said. <laughs> yeah, each one can yes, include, no, include, each one concludes the qualities of the previous one, but in Krishna, everything is there. Right, right. Now that makes that very, very clear, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the clarification because the sweetness of Krishna, his name, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, his entourage, his so blissful flute playing all those things are there only in the krishna feature and that's also yeah. described in the nectar of devotion that krishna has those extra four features his sweet flute playing his beautiful three four bending form his beautiful gopis and uh, what is the fourth one i forget so those things yeah the sweet features of krishna yes thank you thank you very much he's playing on the flute <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. That was a very nice question, Sri Devi. Thank you for asking. Any other questions from devotees? Any other questions, comments, clarification? I'm trying to go down my list here so I don't miss anyone. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes, go ahead, Nandini Radha Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble hey. obeisance Maharaj. Hmm. Nandini Radha from London. 
Yes, Maharaj. We are waiting, Maharaj. We are waiting for you to come back. You look like you're dressed up really for the weather. And I'm, Maharaj, sitting, I... in my, I'm sitting in my short sleeve shirt over here and, and uh, so you get the get the warm clothes ready. <laughs> Maharaj, please bring the sun. We don't want the cold, we want the warmth. So please bring the sun with you. Well, you know, you I'll get stopped by immigration and they say no sun allowed. This is <laughs> London. London means only fog and rain. So we have to keep our culture, we have to keep our reputation. So <laughs> Man, it's been really nice. Like today as well, it's like 12, 13 degrees and it's nice and sunny since last 12, two days. 12, 13 degrees. My God, you guys are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, I wanted to know how important is it to go to a dham? Because obviously we live next to Bhakti Vedanta Manor, you know, and I, I can make, like, I usually make at least two trips a day, you know, to the temple. Mm. Um, uh, if not more so but how important is it to go to a dham you know vrindavan mayapur jagannath puri how important is it well the temples are also manifestations of the dham wherever there is devotional service is the main and only activity that is the dham but mm, the acharyas encourage us to take the opportunity to visit the dhams of Krishna has Krishna or Lord Chaitanya performed his pastimes. Those are full of the shakti and the mercy of the Lord. So it's recommended to at least once a year, according to Srila Prabhupada's practical instructions, to visit the holy dham. Such as he mentioned Mayapur specifically but also you can also go to Vrindavan Mayapur and then you have of course Kurukshetra is also a holy dam so um, yeah when you get into the finer aspects of devotional life you it, it, it recommends that that one should uh, regularly, not at least once a year, they make pilgrimage to the Holy Dham. And Prabhupada said, you know, come to Mayapur during the Lord Chaitanya's appearance day festival and stay for eight days. <laughs> he actually says eight days. <laughs> That's in one lecture. <laughs> so, yeah, these are Prabhupada's recommended instructions. And when you understand the spiritual master, the recommendations and the, the general instructions should not be separated into thinking one is better than the other. Yes, Maharaj. It's our uh, transcendental batteries. It gives us that, uh, that taste. And then when we come back to our respective places, then we are more enthusiastic for service and for performing devotional activities. Yeah, it's important. And these are just recharging the batteries, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, so, you know, I'm in India for another few weeks, so buy your ticket to Bombay and I'll meet you at Gorpurnima. <laughs> I'll be there in Bombay for Gorpurnima. So. Uh, Maharaj, I wish I could just leave the kids and come, you know, I wish. Bring them along. <laughs> make well, it, as, you can make them as carry-on luggage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we usually do. We usually carry them on somewhere. <laughs> We're always carrying them somewhere. So. so, Maharaj, we are planning to go in the summer. We booked our tickets in July, but I'm not sure if we'll go to Bombay, but we will go to Vrindavan. Okay. Yeah. So well, yes. Yeah, so, 
I didn't need to say any of these things that I said. You were already ahead of me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sri Devi hmm. says, I can tell you that within one week of being in Mayapur, my chanting improved. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure, Maharaj, it makes a big difference. And I'd love to just go to Mayapur and stay there for like a couple of weeks at least. But we, we haven't seen family since last three years. You know, my mom and dad uh, and Ash's mom and dad. So I think we can't go to Mayapur this year, but definitely Vrindavan we will. I think Maharaj is and yeah. return yeah we got we got you back Maharaj. we lost you for a minute it's not that we live at the dam there are persons who want to retire from everything and then they come and relive at the dam and that's recommended also but that might not be possible but we should visit at least once a year for at least a week or so it doesn't take much. We spend money on so many things. Why not a ticket to the Holy Dome? Absolutely, Maharaj. Absolutely. Who knows? We might go to Mayapur. You know, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. Huh? Say that again. I said, who knows? We might still be able to go to Mayapur as well when we come to India in July. Yeah, because he's in Mayapur. Must be yeah. the connection. Yeah. Sri Devi is also in Mayapur, but she's got good connection. Oh, yeah, Maharaj I can is also. All the dams are it, it mentions in Navadvip Mandala Navadvip Mahatmya by Bhakti Vinod Thakur that in, in the age of Kali. Because of the influence of Kali Yuga, gradually all of the holy dams develop a curtain of Maya that makes it harder for the conditioned souls to uh, experience the presence of the dam. He said he says that due to the influence of Kali Yuga, the, the, all of the dams except Sri Dham Mayapur become covered by the influence of Kali. As Kali Yuga progresses, Sri Dham Mayapur becomes more and more effulgent. That is from Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Mayapur is special because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this age and he is Radha and Krishna in one. <laughs> And Mayapur has what is called Adarya. Adarya means special mercy. You can't find that special mercy anywhere. So Maharaj, is it recommended that Mayapur, you know, if you're trying to visit a dham, then it should be Mayapur. Like we should prioritize Mayapur rather than Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri. No, you can go to all. <laughs> if you go... <laughs> You should at least visit Mayapur, but you, you can also go to Jagannath Puri. Jagannath Puri's spiritual world. It's just, it's easier to perceive the spiritual energy and the effects of the spiritual energy in Mayapur than it is. It, you have to be more qualified spiritually to get the mercy of the Dham as opposed to Mayapur, even if you're not, you're not at all qualified, you'll get that mercy. Mayapur, Lord Chaitanya just dumps it on you, <laughs> qualified or unqualified. Yeah, come. Come on in. Come in, please. Come in. Yeah. I got a visitor, but we're still alive here. So he um, give him give him that. Yeah, that's for him. And uh, 
Get that T-shirt on the bed. Okay. We're washing. We're washing. Actually, I have to give you this, but I, I'm still wearing it. <laughs> uh, is anything else? No? Yeah, there's actually this, but uh, next tomorrow. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, we're back. In button in in the Dom, everything goes on. <laughs> Come on in. Okay. Right behind me, there's two res I got two residents of London. They escaped from London and they're here in the Dom. Come on in, show your face to all the devotees. A lot of them are coming from, this is Rajiv, some from somewhere in London. And this yeah. is Kanchana Abja from London. So you see, I can't get away from London no matter where I go. <laughs> I think Nandini, you sent these boys to, to make sure I get to London, right? To make sure, from uh, Maharaj, they bring you back with uh, with them. <laughs> well, one's leaving tonight, <laughs> tomorrow, and the, and the other one is staying longer than me. So I don't know which one I should go with. <laughs> Maharaj, <laughs> we will see you on the thirtieth, isn't it, Maharaj? Huh? We will see you on the thirtieth of March. Uh, well, thirty first. Okay, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Raja, I, I have a, a question. I don't know what it, as a question or a comment that sometimes, you know, how can we, it's, it's really nice. And, and I think I, I'm speaking from a manager point of view that it's that how can devotees, sometimes when devotees want to go to Mayapur, the whole temple flees. <laughs> They all want to run to Mayapur, and then how does the services go on in the local temple? Like, how can you know? How can we help devotees to balance that out? Because, and I think that's the concern that some temples have. You know, okay, everybody wants to go to Mayapur, or I mean, travel, and then we ship out like 10, 15, 20 devotees, and then the services get so bogged down on just one, two people. In nineteen, I think what was it, nineteen seventy-three. The devotees from America booked an entire jet and they filled up the whole jet. The entire jet was filled with just devotees. Then they had the own the only seats. I think there was 200 plus seats in there. And they all traveled together to see Srila Prabhupada in in uh, in Mayapur. Yeah. Yeah. So that happened, <laughs> and that wasn't just one temple. That was a and that was the leaders from many of the temples all around America. They all came. But you know what happened? I'll tell you one thing. This is a kind of a sad thing. But when Prabhupada was leaving the body, Prabhupada gave the word to all his leaders: tell every devotee everywhere in the world. They should come and and see me in Vrindavan. And Prabhupada was leaving. And uh, the leaders didn't do that. Why? Because they were afraid that if all of the devotees came, the temples would not have enough functions. But that was Prabhupada's instructions. He didn't care because he wanted to give his association to each and every devotee, disciple, before he left the world, knowing that that personal association with the spiritual master in his last hours with us, or last days with us, would really stay within the hearts of each and every devotee. And that would, that would commit them deeper into Krishna consciousness. So out of fear that the temples would not be able to function, the leaders didn't tell the devotees.
I, I did hear that past time. I, so actually, that situation that, that happened. And I was the one, I also was one who was in New Vrindavan and I didn't get to go. And so, because we never got the word and Prabhupada had said that all of my disciples should come. So Marsh, how can we balance that? Because you, because when I look back, you know, during COVID, when temples was opening up, well, not opening up, kind of, and there was hardly anybody coming to the temple, and it was just maintained by four or five people, almost getting burnt out, <laughs> you know, but still they were well, charging that, along. That would that happen even when, like for instance, when Prabhupada came to Chicago. The St. Louis Temple left one devotee in charge of the deities, and the whole temple went to from, travel from St. Louis to Chicago to meet Prabhupada. So these were special occasions. I don't think you can say that these were like just pilgrimages to the Holy Dham. They were pilgrimages to the to the lotus feet of the pure devotee who represents the Dham. So I would say it's a practical question. It's just you rotate people and some people go and then when they come back, the next group can go like that. Rotate, to, yeah, that is definitely a good one, yes. Yeah. Because That's that a practical, way yeah, practical suggestion on how to to facilitate both. That that way does does the services don't get affected or the devotees don't get burnt out or one falls sick, there's someone else to back up or something. I was just thinking because that seemed to always be yeah. a challenge. But when when it comes to the spiritual master, then you can't hold that back. <laughs> Yes, I agree. Yes, Marge, uh, def definitely. Yeah, like you said, if it's, um, you know, uh, as, as you mentioned, special uh, reason, I, I think is how you put it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Marge. Marge, we passed the hour. It's 8, it's 8 15 a.m. here. I don't know what the time is in my poor. I don't know if you would like to end with a round or it's too late there please get around the job yes for chanting it's never too late <laughs> <laughs>